Good morning, folks. The Earthquake Volcano Connection is continuing in what's beginning to be a creepy way. We've got news from our world out into deep space, but let's start with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours were all about minor movement. Expansive umbral field break at the active region, but no CME. Dark coronal holes as well, with a small, thin, longitudinal filament north of them. Filaments have also begun to be much more active around the limbs. Are we raring for another uptick in a few weeks just like last year? Tough to say, but for sure the lone active region in weeks' time is not in a rush. Still undeveloped and no solar flares as of yet. The coronal hole departing to the right had already had its solar wind impact Earth. Turns out it's enduring a bit at the top speed level, driving another bout of geomagnetic instability. And after 48 hours in the stream, we should watch for intensification of numerous tropical events within 24 hours, like, say, Lane and route to Hawaii there. Of course, the broken record has been a week-long earthquake watch based on those openings, and the magnitude 6 flurry continues. What's more interesting is Iwo Jima also goes by the name of its group of sisters called the Volcano Islands of Japan. Almost like Earth was tempting our anxiety after yesterday's note about the big ones seeming like they are only hitting volcanoes right now. Thus far, the action has luckily been below the surface. As we move on to show the transition zone blood echo and Earth spot low overhead of the epicenter of the Iwo Jima quake, know that if we don't get a magnitude 7 today, we will match last year's record drought at that magnitude, setting us up for a scary end of the year once again. Let's quickly get the cloud phase and lightning for the last day in the U.S. Widespread pop-ups confined to a convergence line cutting across the central states in the overnight hours. Top weather story on Earth, however, is the Indian monsoon. 86 dead in the worst flooding in a century as it just takes the slightest irregularity in the monsoon to wash you away or leave you thirsty for years at a time. Going next to Hubble... A complete UV sky has been added to the infrared and visible wavelength shots to create what they say is a relatively complete picture, minus the x-rays of course. No doubt it is fun to spend time looking at the individual objects and asking what they might be, which is what happened here. Planetary nebula is supposed to appear like it does on the right, but an inside-out nebula was found to have concentric shells around its central star of nitrogen and then hydrogen outside. They say the star is a bit of a phoenix. It had one big boom, but has been reborn of the fire. Folks, the next conference is indeed three days long. Had to expand it to get everything in. Featured talks of Dr. Tinsley, solar forcing legend, here to deliver the detail of the forcing interaction. Dr. Robitaille returns to discuss his world-class radiological perspective on the chromosphere. Dr. Upton, as you recall from yesterday, will be giving the magnetic fields prediction of the coming solar cycles. Dr. Claridge has the Electric Universe stage for the weekend, and I'll be updating the earthquake forecasting model, teaching you how to predict earthquakes, and going over the worst-case scenario for later the century as the sun and magnetosphere begin to change rapidly. Got about 75% of the tickets out the door for the awake event of the year. Why not come see why this community is what it is? We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.